So let's talk about angular velocity and linear velocity. So um, angular velocity, this is just how fast the angle is changing. So if I think about some sort of rotation, like if I was standing here looking this way, and I swept my eyes over to look this way, I went through a certain angle, right? So what angular velocity is, the, the, it's measuring rotation in, in terms of time. So it's the angle change over time. Or if I know the number of radians this swept out and how long it took, I can think of it as radians over time. Velocity is a measure in terms of time, angular, radians. So um, that's my units for angular velocity. For linear velocity, we've dealt with linear velocity for a long time. This is uh, just a distance over time. That's, that's all that it is. So, you know, if you think about measures like miles per hour, how many miles were covered in one hour? That's, that's what linear velocity is a measure of. But it could be different units, right? Like inches per day or whatever. So this is distance over time. So, um, so if I think about traveling in an arc length, if I know that, if I know how long this is, that's my distance. So I'm going to go distance over time. So arc length over how long it takes to go that. And in a way, I'm just taking this and like just thinking of it as a straight line, just measuring its distance, dividing by how long it took. All right. So that being said. Uh, we have a situation down below that we can analyze. So something, probably a tire, uh, rotates 32 times in a second. Um, or Yeah, 32 times in a second, and its diameter is 8 inches. So let's think about the angular velocity for this. Angular velocity is in radians per time. So really, that's what I want to, uh, to find. I don't know radians yet. I know that it, it rotates 32 times per second. So 32 rotations in one second. If I was looking for rotations per second, that would be great. I'm not. I'm looking for radians per second. So each rotation each is, is 2 pi radians. In, in other words, what I can think about is, um, I'm going to set this up this way, one rotation, because I want rotations to, to um, cancel out. And I want this in terms of radians, so my answer will be in radians per second. And one rotation is 2 pi radians, which is great. Rotations cancel out. That's a 1 on the bottom. 32 times 2 pi is 64 pi. And again, notice this is radians per second, angular velocity. And um, I could go 64 pi on my calculator, do, 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 and get some answers. I can do that. It's about 201.06 radians per second. And both these answers are good. That one's exact. That one's exact. And this one is an estimate. All right, next one, linear velocity. Linear velocity is the distance over time. So what I want this in terms of is distance over time. So I'm going to do the same kind of setup, but just try and get things in terms of distance. It rotates 32 times in a second, so this is 32 rotations in one second. Um, each rotation is a certain distance, right? Like the diameter of this thing is 8 inches, and all the way around, if I knew that circumference, that's how much rotation is. I'm just going to multiply that by that 32, because it's 32 of them in one second. Um, another way for me to set it up is think about one rotation must be how many inches rotations will cancel out. Um, so if the diameter is 8, that means that all the way around the circumference is 8 pi, diameter times pi. So uh, rotations cancel out 32 times 8 pi. That's uh, what, 64, 128 pi. I'm looking at so 256 pi inches per second, distance per time. It's a linear velocity. Um, that many inches per second, if I multiply that out, that is uh, 800, about 804.25 inches per second. Either answer is good. I think this one's a little easier to visualize.
So that's the basic idea between angular velocity and linear velocity. I want to make one connection here real quick. Um, so I erase that, but I'm going to do the, I'm going to keep track of one thing up here. Remember the, the diameter was eight inches, so the radius was, was four inches. If I know the angular velocity, notice it's 64 pi over one um, radians per second. If I know the angular velocity and I want the linear velocity, this is how many radians it's gone through. So what I can do is I can multiply that by the radius. And if I multiply the number of radians by the radius, uh, 64 times 4 is 256. It gives me 256 pi. That's the distance it's gone through in one second. And notice that's the same answer. So angular velocity times the radius gives me linear velocity. Linear velocity divided by the radius gives me angular velocity.